our laser beam is perfectly stable, or well, not perfectly stable, but relatively stable. And uh, and then we're, it doesn't do anything after that. So uh, this is how it works in theory. Uh, in practice, uh, I've tested this, and this is some some results. So this is a case where if you just dropped your two hundred thousand uh, dollar laser, and uh, you pick it up and plug it back in, and it's uh, it's fluctuated by uh, about sixty percent of its maximum amplitude. So. Uh, what my circuit does is uh, when the feedback is switched on, even with these very, very large uh, fluctuations in amplitude, it stabilizes it quite a bit, with the exception of these small bumps over there. Uh, uh, this was obviously not done by dropping a $200,000 laser. Rather, I uh, just modulated the current to uh, a laser diode, and uh, that's how I got these big modulations. So, uh, performance does increase when um, uh, when our fluctuations are not quite so high and abrupt, and uh, and I should mention there's there's a high cost due to the uh, uh, the fact that we're using an AOM, which is not perfectly efficient, and also uh, to the fact that we're making our RF uh, uh, to our RF signal to the AOM uh, much smaller. So obviously this can't amplify it. Uh, we're just going to make it uh, smaller, which will result in a uh, lower power laser beam. But uh, if our fluctuations are not so high, then uh, this won't result in much loss in power. For example, if we only have a 2% fluctuation, then we'll only have about a 2% loss in power, uh, minus the, the AOM. So, in conclusion, I've created a, a simple, uh, easy to troubleshoot, uh, cost-effective uh, solution to this uh, messy laser beam. And uh, this has uses in, in, in atom trapping or any experiment where, where we're measuring the power of, 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 uh, of the laser beam or, or our variables are dependent on the power of the laser beam. And uh, in terms of future work, uh, I plan on, uh, first of all, testing this on, on a, a gas laser whose intensity is, is naturally fluctuating, just to see if we get the same kind of results. That's the first thing I do. Uh, Second of all, I, I'd like to explore the parameter space for this device. So, for example, I could change the low pass filter cutoff frequency or uh, impedances uh, within the circuit and, and try and optimize and find the, the best set of values that make this work. And another thing we could do is we could just use the same concept but apply it to a different mechanism for, uh, for changing the, the laser power. For example, I can get rid of all R and A1 components if we simply use a rotating half-wave plate and a polarizing beam splitting cube. We would send the, uh, the feedback to the rotating half-wave plate, which would change the, uh, the uh, polarization. And uh, this, when passed through the polarizing beam splitting cube, would, um, would uh, also stabilize uh, laser intensity, all, albeit for much lower frequency fluctuations uh, since we're mechanically moving at a rotating halfway flavor. So, thank you, thanks for listening, and uh, that's my talk.
fluctuations to to any uh, non-regular fluctuations, right? So it, 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 I don't see a reason why it would uh, it would work worse with uh, non-regular fluctuations. 